Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. It's that time of year again. The time when the walls of reality grow thin and the world gets lousy with ghoulies, ghosties, and long-legged beasties. The Halloweeny times are upon us, and that always puts us in a spooky mood. But we're going to need a game to play, and we'll need one that's appropriately scary in order to stick with the theme of the season. Halloween is a time for terrifying tales and spooky stories told around the campfire, and I think I have just the putrid parable to chill your bones. <laughs> I've heard that many years ago, in a woods near a little town, just like the one we're in now, a game was released. Now this game was a little different. Some said it was because of government testing. Others said it was God's punishment for the sins of its writers. All that is known is that it's not the way that things are supposed to be. Its birthplace was the death of another world. Its legacy. Darkness. Wait, are you talking about the world of darkness? The long time ago was 2004 and the little town was California! Ah, atmosphere! Fucking amateurs! Well, Fox is right about one thing. White Wolf Game Studios' The World of Darkness is possibly the perfect game for the Halloween season. In 2003, White Wolf set the industry on fire with its announcement of what they called the Time of Judgment. They proclaimed the wrap and cancellation of all of their flagship product lines. The idea was that the old World of Darkness titles were about a world on the brink of apocalypse, and the time had come to put their money where their mouth was. The universe would end and they would make something new in its place. For the first time, the setting itself was a game, a concise codex about the people of the world who aren't monsters, a foundation, as it were, for the personal horror of the vampires and werewolves juxtaposed against the very physical terror of the average person. The hobby went mad. Industry insiders called it suicide. Fans threatened to defect from the line entirely. In the end, the new setting debuted, and it was... changed. What emerged was a very different animal, a new take on modern horror. A new world of darkness. So it's a game about normal people who've had their eyes open to a world they believe to be fables. A world they can never close their eyes to again. How well did they manage? Let's take a look at the world of darkness. Game Studios The World of Darkness is a tricky animal. It's a complete game, yes, but only in a way. In another way, it's only the skeleton of a game. A great set of bones in many aspects, but in other ways incomplete. It comes off as more of an atmosphere than a setting, really. In a sense, The World of Darkness is a state of mind, rather than a separate place. The new format design was built around the idea of a core rulebook that would contain all the system information so that the other game lines that rely on it would have more space in their own books for unique rules and fluff. And the idea worked out pretty well. The World of Darkness does so much more than introduce the rules of the engine. It introduces the players to the entire paradigm that every other game in the line is founded on. We're introduced to a world of modern horror, superficially similar to the real world, but just slightly askew. Moreover, we're given a definition of what that horror is. Unknowable things lurk just below the surface of what we know. However, this leaves a bit of a hole in the game that they've worked towards filling, but you can still kind of see it's there. The World of Darkness, when you get down to it, has no actual setting. Rather, it has, as we said before, a mood, an atmosphere that is essential to the game line's entire oeuvre. In a way, this is the only way to do this correctly, but it leaves a great deal of its setting's details in the hands of the storyteller. And that's the World of Darkness. It's what you're already familiar with, but warped so that the edges fray just enough that the questions come pouring in. The questions that drive men to obsession, and the answers that drive them to madness. And it's just about that pretentious as well. I met a college girl whose friend was recently hospitalized by a supernatural. I just wanted to make something I could relate to. 
A normal person caught up in the horror that bubbles just beneath the surface. Cool. That's always a good idea. Mine is a little different. I was exposed at a younger age and have become obsessed with finding the truth. Possibly to a dangerous level. I've got kind of a Fox Mulder meets Randolph Carter thing going on. Great. I guess I'll be stuck tanking then. My guy's X Cream Beret, Specimen's Training, Total Ninja. If it goes bump in the night, then I bump it off. I don't think that'll fit very well. You did hear that he wants to run a hyper-realistic modern horror game with a heavy emphasis on atmosphere, hopelessness, and dread, right? Yeah, that's why I spent the last two weeks watching Army of Darkness, Jack Brooks Monster Slayer, and Big Trouble in Little China. I'm going to find the monsters and kick their Batrachi and assholes back to Slug Island. Or whatever, so put that in your notebook and suck it. Okay, let me know how that goes for you. I'll record it for posterity. One of the major issues with the World of Darkness is its character creation. Specifically, the number of options available to its players. There are lots of them, but at the same time there aren't. Since the game is written with the assumption that players will portray relatively ordinary people like you or me. Well, at least you. This is more of a failing of the genre than of the game itself, however. Horror doesn't work in Dungeons & Dragons, because once a person is trained to fight monsters, the horror is lost. World of Darkness understands this. Thus, the problem is approached from a very Lovecraftian angle. The character is intended to be a regular person who has been exposed to the supernatural. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it really is. What this means is that the player characters aren't meant to be fearless, highly trained slayers of evil. Their lives are touched by supernatural forces, but they themselves are still just people. It's the kind of logic that makes horror movies like Paranormal Activity work. If you want to do something a little more action-oriented, then the storyteller will have to take pains to balance the monsters so that the players can handle them in any way. Then, they have to make absolute sure that everyone knows exactly what style of game he or she is running. The generation system is a basic point buy, with each aspect of the character divvied up and purchased with a specific pool of resources. The biggest unifying trait is that each category gets a number of points best described as not quite enough to do what you want. Other than that, it is fairly well balanced. The engine lets you customize very nicely, but reins in the player's natural inclination to optimize at the expense of making an actual character. A major point that I would like to make is the excellence of the Virtue and Vice engine. Every character has two major defining traits, one called a Virtue and one called a Vice. It's essentially an alignment engine that defines both positive and negative aspects of the character, but it never feels like a hindrance or restriction. Instead, it serves to reward the player for good role-playing and reacting in character. Better still, it encourages actions that will, for good or ill, drive the story forward. It also ties nicely with the rules for morality. World of Darkness characters have a morality score that represents a level of ethical development and mental integrity. Characters begin at an average Joe score of 7 and can lose morality according to the actions that they take. The scale ranges from complete amoral psychopath at 1 to unsullied saint at 10. If your morality descends below one, however, you have become so savagely evil as to lose your mind completely and your character becomes unplayable. It's important to note that it becomes more and more difficult to lose morality as you get to the lower end of the scale. Petty theft might really nag at the conscience of an essentially good person, but after you've murdered a man in cold blood, it starts to lose its impact. Characters will tend to stabilize at some point unless the player just keeps upping the ante. As his or her morality degenerates, the character also runs the risk of gaining derangements. These are mental disorders that represent psychological scarring left behind by or defense mechanisms to protect the mind from the horrors the character has seen. This mechanic is brilliant when used correctly, but inspires ill feelings toward the game and draws complaints when mismanaged by a poor game master, or when made over intrusive by zealotry or misunderstanding. Morality can raise or lower through roleplaying, but keeping it higher than 6 or 7 requires extreme effort and discipline. White Wolf does not make it easy to be Sai Baba. Use the system when dramatically appropriate, and your players will be left with no complaint other than, what do you mean I'm not allowed to get away with murder? The engine is a dice pool system where each point in an attribute or skill represents 1d10 you get to roll. Successes are cumulative, but rare, requiring an 8 or higher to qualify. Combat is hyper-realistic and extremely dangerous. Firearms especially have been tooled to work as a very authentic simulator. Death is a very real and ever-present threat, particularly for mortal characters. In spite of this, or perhaps because of it, the World of Darkness still works, and it works well. Combat is something the players are going to want to avoid, unless it's absolutely necessary, because it's highly dangerous and potentially lethal, just like in real life. Critical thinking, and above all, role-playing, are paramount, and the rules are designed with an eye towards enforcing that. Alright, so the clues have led you to an abandoned house on the outskirts of the city. The streets crawl with autumn leaves as the nearly skeletal trees sway ominously in the wind. The house rises before you menacingly, its eaves accenting upper windows that seem to glare at you. 
Somewhere in the distance, thunder growls as if announcing an oncoming storm. That's great. Thanks, Herman Melville. I'll listen at the door. Do I hear him on side? Yes. There is someone on the other side of the door. You can't be sure if it's who or what you're looking for. Tits, I kick in the door. Do I get a surprise around? No. No, you don't. Inside are members of the gang your source told you was involved with the witch doctor. They are obviously paranoid and expecting trouble, so they have their weapons prepared. So they open fire on you. Shit, how much damage should I take? All of it. You take all of the damage. Your body hits the ground after collecting more lead than an early era Warhammer enthusiast. You are extremely dead. Damn! Got it. Hey guys, did you say you like pretty books? Because these are gorgeous. That is, if you find books that have been scientifically formulated to make you shit your pants beautiful. The entirety of the World of Darkness has been released in hardback, very durable binding. The core book is in black and white, but is very heavily stylized. Every square inch of the book is geared to carry the previously mentioned mood of eerily familiar dread. Overall, it's a very attractive and artistic design, if a little stark. The durability praise tends to end with the cover, however. While the binding itself is very sturdy and the cover nigh onto a Kevlar vest, the paper stock used is highly susceptible to moisture. The tendency is to pack a lot into each book, both in content and artistry, while keeping shipping costs very low. This is accomplished by using extremely thin, highly glossy pages that tend to turn into glue if they become even the least bit damp. That being said, the cost is fairly low. At $25, the World of Darkness appears on the surface to be a really good deal. However, one will discover the line to be deceptively expensive very quickly. The first thing you will probably notice is the core book provides little to nothing in the way of monsters. This is fine for imaginative storytellers, but it lacks the ease of having a variety of beasts detailed for you and their unique systems explained. So you will likely find yourself wanting World of Darkness antagonists. A really good book, but another $25 for only 132 pages. Again, it's well-bound and hardback because White Wolf utterly abandoned the model of the quick and dirty splat book, but regardless, you're up to 50 bucks now. Then you might want more character options. Well, you could get World of Darkness Armory to really tool up your equipment, or Second Sight, which has rules for psychically gifted characters. More good books. Oh hell, you know what? They're all good books. You're likely to want them all. I'm sure your loan officer will be very understanding. This does illustrate another strength, incredible amounts of support. You will run out of money long before you run out of books for this game, and this isn't even getting into the other lines, such as Vampire the Requiem or Changeling the Lost. All in all, the pros balance the cons and the line comes out ahead. The World of Darkness is a highly stylized game, built around the concept that our seemingly safe and sane world is in fact neither. It conveys its themes masterfully, and it does so in a way that makes the books a pleasure to read. While the core book contains few answers, it asks exactly the right questions. The setting gets a solid chamber from me. The engine is obviously designed to be bare bones, and it succeeds admirably in that it never seems to interfere with the tale being told. While the high difficulty of task resolution and the unforgiving combat rules can seem a bit frustrating to a player used to Dungeons and Dragons in its ilk, it's clear that this was a design choice rather than an error. The system gets a chamber as well. Support is excellent, even ignoring Vampire, Werewolf, and the other spin-off lines, with a plethora of supplements available. Each of these is generally an engaging read, rather than a dry list of new rules. Support gets a chamber from me, for a perfect 3 out of 3. I never played Old World of Darkness, so I can't draw the same sort of comparisons my companions do. What I can say, however, is that World of Darkness remains my favorite psychological horror game to date. I think it's fantastic all around. It gets a perfect 3 out of 3 from me. I'm a huge fan of White Wolf, and I'll admit to being a bit of a fanboy. In fact, the first game I ever played was Werewolf the Apocalypse back in its first edition. I consider myself lucky to have been introduced to the story over Slaughter Camp first. That being said, I was pleased to see that as I grew out of my geeky goth phase, the World of Darkness grew up alongside me, sort of exchanging its uh, teen angst gothic punk for a more mature, lovecrafty, and dour. The setting gets an easy chamber as well. Mechanically, the World of Darkness is as smooth as silk. If used as recommended, its lethality will accent the drama rather than define it. Again, an easy chamber. Thank you, Rules, for staying well out of my way. Finally, I find the books gorgeous. Every line has its own unique individual feel to its art that really helps the player immerse themselves in the setting. Again, another chamber, and another perfect score. World of Darkness is a great game from a great company. We highly recommend it to new and experienced players alike. 
Be aware, however, that the game is very dependent, more so than some other RPGs, on the Game Master's storytelling skills and experience. True. Without a strong captain at the helm, the ship will not sail. It's a game that requires experience, maturity, and subtlety. We'd like to recommend the following titles if you're not diving immediately into one of the monstrous lines. Armory, Innocence, and Second Sight for the Players, Mysterious Places, Urban Legends, and Antagonist for the Storyteller. And then the game grew and grew. More and more books came out until it had devoured every shelf and every game night. Some thought that it could be stopped by a radical format shift, but that only made it stronger. In the end, it couldn't be contained. It couldn't be stopped. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a great story. It is just a story, right? Right? And with that, I declare this meeting of the Midnight Rouleteers closed. Sweet dreams. Sure, if it's who or what you're looking for. Tits. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say tits. <laughs>